I have been asked a couple of questions. Who do I think is the best guitar player and who is my favorite guitar player? Stay tuned and I'll show you how I answer that question. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. I'm gonna work a little bit on this guitar today. This is the last day that you're gonna see this guitar. As I said in past videos, I've got just a couple more holes to drill. We're gonna get that done. And then I am not gonna continue showing this one because the person who's getting this watches. He knows he's getting this guitar. His name's Tony. He is a veteran of the Army and he has dealt with a lot of struggles over the last years from a brain aneurysm and then a tumor from that aneurysm has been in the hospital a lot lately he feels like he's ready to be playing guitar again he used to play guitar a lot he was one of the guys that inspired me in playing guitar and so as a thank you to tony and just encouragement to him and to his wife really i hope as well unless he plays it loud and obnoxious for her all the time then she might uh, throw this back at me but I want to encourage Tony, and I want to thank those of you, those Patreons who have been helping to support this project uh, so that we can give these guitars away. The other guitar that I'm going to be working on is this guitar, and it's had seven sprays. It looks kind of funky right now because it has been sanded down to 400 grit sandpaper. I'll work on that guitar a little bit more. That one is still up for grabs. I'm taking nominations. This week is the last week to nominate somebody for this guitar, and then I'll be making a decision, and I'll finish that guitar in the next couple of weeks, and I will give it away. Okay, before I answer the question as to who I think is the best guitar player and who is my favorite guitar player, we're going to drill these couple of holes. The first one's really quite easy, but what I want to show you is how I drill these I'm such a klutz sometimes. What I want to show you is what bit I use and how I drill these holes for my lines to go from the pickups to the electronics cavity where I'm going to have my volume and tone pot and my three-way switch. I'm just going to put a little cloth down and it's going to go just from here right over into here. There's just a little bit of wood in there. I use a very long drill bit. This bit, I don't know, must be probably about a 16 inch bit. I use a long bit like this so my angle can be almost flat. This is a 3 8 inch bit. Electronics that I use are EMGs and they have these ends on them which are a quick clip. So I like to use a little bit larger. Sometimes I'm putting multiple lines through one hole. But let's just go ahead and get this And in here, you'll see that it's just coming right through in here. That's where I want it. And the next one is going to come really close to it because I'm going to go, now I'm going to go from this side over to here. This is this one's a little bit more complicated. Once again, put just a piece of cloth over to protect. And I'm going to be running it essentially from here up to here. And I don't want it to be too too close to the front here. I want it to be more up here. That's why I need to keep it as about flat as I possibly can as I come through there. And that's why I use such a long bit. That was pretty quick and easy and that's the last you're going to see of this guitar until it's finished and we give it to Tony. Got all of those holes drilled, everything's ready to go. I just now need to do a little hand sanding and then I'm gonna stain this and get it ready. So I am looking at probably about maybe four weeks before I've got this completely finished. So it is on the way, Tony, won't be long now. Now let's see if I can answer the question, who is the best guitar player on the planet? Well, I can tell you that the best guitar player in this room is me because there's nobody else in this room except me. And even then, I might give myself a run for the money. Who's the best guitar player on the planet? You know, Eddie Van Halen said it, there is no best. You might wanna argue that. But here's the problem. How do we define what is best? 
do we define by speed, technique, complexity? And oftentimes when I'm asked this question, I'm asked two questions, usually same people, two questions. Who's the best guitar player? And the other question is, who's your favorite guitar player? Which infers that the best guitar player is not necessarily my favorite guitar player. And I would have to say that is an accurate implication. The nature of those questions speaks into the complexity. Who's the best? Who's my favorite? Best guitar players are not necessarily the guitar players that I most enjoy listening to. The right question is, what guitar players do you appreciate and why? The question seems pretty straightforward, but I think it's a pretty complex answer to it because I think it's a bad question. Who is the best? How do you define best? Because you could define best by who makes the best melody or harmony or, or supports the vocalist the most that just draws a listener in. Is the best guitar player the uh, guy who can play the most variety? This guy plays country, he plays metal, he plays jazz, he plays classical, he plays funk, he pl plays Motown. Is that how you define what is best? Who can play with quality the most variety? In most cases, speed and complexity don't make for what is the most pleasing to my ear. Now I can sit back and be absolutely in awe by the speed of Herman Lee, or Joe Satriani, or Steve Vai. Those are some guys, Ingve Melmstein. Those are some guys that I can appreciate greatly how fast they can play. Stuff that I will never be able to do. And I know, never say never, but you know what? I've been playing guitar since I was 13 years old. I've been playing for a long time. My fingers just do not have that speed. Even as I try to work on it, I can't play that fast. To ask who is the best guitar player, it's almost not fair because you can hold so many up. In fact, I put a list together. If I were to just make a list like this and I start listing them to you, you're gonna be thinking, well, what about this guy? What about this girl? And I don't like them at all. But here are some great guitar players. You know, you put a list together and I think of Neil Sean. I think of David Gilmore. I think of Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eddie Van Halen, B.B. King, Jeff Beck. But what about Tommy Emmanuel? I love the way Tommy Emmanuel plays. My goodness, he is so good. El Demiola, uh, Django Reinhardt. The guy could really only play, I think, with three fingers, right? But he was amazing. And you know what? He was fast. listening to Ingve. Sorry, Ingve, if you by chance watch this. I can really appreciate, my goodness, absolutely incredible, stuff that I would never, ever, ever, ever be able to play. I would rather listen to Stevie Ray Vaughan play Riviera Paradise. Nice. And Stevie Ray Vaughan's another guy that within him, in him, himself, there is Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff that I will watch and, and I am amazed by the fact that he can play so fast, both rhythm and lead at the same time. And I just go, wow, incredible. But it's not necessarily what I like to listen to, but I love to listen to Riviera Paradise. Stevie Ray Vaughan's version of Little Wing is one of my favorites. Eric Clapton, uh, Richie Sambora, The Edge from U2. Again, you know what? He definitely wouldn't be the best if you're looking for the fastest guitar player or the most complex guitar player, but boy, does he know how to lay down some, some attention-getting little riffs and to layer upon layer upon layer of little tiny guitar parts that just, they're, they're incredible. And he knows how to use effects pedals like crazy. And then, of course, there's other guys that know effects pedals. Just give me some good old overdrive and uh, a little bit of reverb maybe, and that's all I need. He's got it, uh, but you got Dwayne Eddy, you've got Phil Kagey, Andreas Segovia, classic.
An incredible guitar playing. Uh, Johnny Lang, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, my goodness, Alex Lifeson. So many good guitar players. I think the problem is we think it's somehow a competition, like it's some sort of sporting event. And I'm afraid that if we treat music like a sporting event, eh, who's the fastest, who's the most complex, you start to lose the heart of music because really music isn't about competition, it's about an expression. If you, if you think of guitar playing like a competition, uh, it's really easy to want to give up. I see so many good guitar players, and there have been times that I've sat with guitar players who are so phenomenal that I walked away almost wanting to quit playing because I felt like I will never match up to that. But if I sit down with my guitar, and I'm in a room like this by myself and I start to play, I can just really love what I hear come out and I can enjoy it. It's an extension of a person, what they feel and how they're expressing themselves through notes. And that's why a guy like B.B. King, I think is a good guitar player because he takes one note and he can make it sing in a way that just expresses something that's inside. But if it's an expression of the soul, then it's a felt expression and it's not just mechanics of playing notes or you could just as well have a MIDI player. If you remember the bad MIDI from the 1980s and 90s, some MIDI is getting a little bit better, but even still, MIDI lacks the heart of music. Maybe the better question is, who do I most appreciate with playing guitar? After the first day of spraying, I noticed that there were a couple of little pits here and there where the pores of the wood were just a little bit deeper than the surrounding areas. So I used a little CA glue. There's different types that you can use, but just a, like a CA hobby glue. Uh, and I put a couple of little spots that I just filled with that. At this point, if they're bubbled up plenty, I can use a razor blade and shave off carefully shaving off the majority of that bump. And then I can just sand off the rest. And once I get it sanded off and sanded flat, then I will continue to spray this. Again, this is after seven times of spraying. I will just sand these little rough spots off and I will continue to spray. You won't even see that those were there. And it's just a quicker way to fill in those spots. The other thing that I'll sometimes use is this color tone water-based grain filler. If I just have a few little spots though, I'll just spot it with a CA glue. I can't say I'm a huge fan of this water-based grain filler. In fact, a lot of times I will just spray more layers of polyurethane instead of using the grain filler. Just a personal preference, I guess. Here's where that bump of glue was right there. And you might be able to see just a littlest bit of it there yet. But if I just dampen here as well, this is what it's gonna look like with the poly on it. And then you've got these multiple random little 12 year old, 14 year old, 16 year old kids on YouTube that can play so good. And I just think to myself, I wish I would have had YouTube when I was 13 years old so I could have learned how to play. But when I was learning to play, we sat with a record player and you'd move the needle and listen to the guitar part and then you'd back it up or a cassette player, push play, click stop, push play, click stop and uh, listen to it and try and play it and figure it out. And thus, Smoke on the Water becomes the number one first song that most people learn. Anyway, guys, it's been fun. We'll catch you later. Fight for joy.